the skill and the techniques needed to play winning football. Let me tell you, understanding is a wonderful thing. They don't have to know the damn coverage or they don't know have to know everything on earth, but when they understand, when I, when I showed JT that, I'm telling you now, I saw he saw that big old split in there where he should have added, where I should have taught him to add. Made a difference. So the drill is a process designed to help you play. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, coach, go ahead. So we did the skill, we identified the skill, <coughs> and we, we identified the meaning of drill. Okay, the time of life. This is the third component, the time of life. I think this is really important. <coughs> Number one, how well and how poorly, or how poorly, your players are executing the, the skills. Okay? If you're getting good execution, just polish it. Just polish it. If you're getting poor execution, you need to coach it, and you need to spend time, whatever time you need, where that execution comes up. That's your job. If you don't do that, take your damn coaching shirt off, because you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Okay? And don't do this. I work with guys that say, they would have said about JT right there, that dumbass. I told him before, I told him to add right there for a tackle like that. Well, y'all know that ain't going to happen. You got to coach that stuff. You got to drill that stuff if you want that kind of execution. But these are the, this is the first thing in the, in time of life, okay? <coughs> the second thing, how well and how poor in season the specific nature of your opponent's offense and defense. This will date me, but I'm going to say it for you. When I coached against Nebraska, I didn't never work the damn draw drill. Coach Osmond was out there. Milt Tenniper was out there for 28 years coaching the damn offensive line. I ain't seen them back up yet. They never back up. Why in the hell would I work the draw drill? I, threw, I didn't fool the damn draw drill that week. I coached against Steve Spurrier at Florida a lot of times. You better work on the slide draw. The lead draw, you be, ask better work on it because you're going to get you a belly full of it. Okay, so that's two extreme examples, but the, the specific nature of the opponent's offense or defense, that's how long you need to work on it. Back in the day when we played Alabama there in the wishbone before y'all were born, uh, <laughs> we worked that damn thing every Monday. Not you, not y'all. We worked that thing every Monday. We had a 30-minute period, so I'm sorry, 15-minute period, pre-practice because of this, guys. There's no way in hell we could execute the defense against the wishbone as good as they could ex execute the damn wishbone itself with them doing it every day, every game, and us seeing it one time a year. We had to find a time, and the kids had to understand. This is slop jar period here. We're going to work on the damn wishbone. I know it's a long time to play before we play all night, but we're going to work We're gonna work on it every Monday for 15 minutes. If you don't, we never get ready to play. Mm -hmm. Okay, coach. Now, here's an example. So I'm going to get some damn real football. When I put this film together, my uh, video guy said to me, oh, I was wondering if we're going to have any damn football plays. <laughs> this one right here. There's a lot of them talking, I know. But the example, go back, coach, and run that point over. Gap responsibility. Guys, gap responsibility. Defending the run with proper gap, proper gap responsibility. I think that's one of the things at Philadelphia that we got so much better on. What Jim was having to do was blitz to stop the run. He was having to blitz to stop the pass, and he was having to blitz to stop the run. And one of the things was, they, they didn't, there was no gap responsibility. There was no accountability for the gaps. There were no great fits between the linebackers and the, and the uh, front people. Coach, Monday, if the weather allows, they're bringing the inside linebacker coach to Atlanta, Georgia, to spend the afternoon with me on blow delivery, on blow delivery. <laughs> because he's having a problem with it with the Eagles. He's flying to Atlanta to spend the afternoon with me on, if the weather prevents on blow delivery. Fitting the linebacker in there and, and 
having get blow every on those people. He he's not doing a good job of it. He's, he's, you know, he's Peter on losing his damn job. <clears throat> Defending the run with proper gap responsibility. So the drill is a gap responsibility drill. Okay, and this is just you can name a ham sandwich and turkey sandwich if you want to. Don't make it that. But this is kind of a standard way that we teach it is uh, is those gap responsibilities. And the gap identification is real important. Their understanding. I like this shot. Coach, hit that light just for a minute. Look at this thing, guys. And now, what I really like, and I'll get into this in just a little while, the inside of his inside foot is on the inside of his outside foot in a five tick. The inside of his <coughs> inside foot is on the inside of his outside foot. The inside of his inside foot is on the inside of his outside foot. This is what we call a crash five. Okay? That's under defense. Weak eagle, whatever you might call it. We line up a little wider than a lot of people do, but I, we'll get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. Okay? So that's uh, that's a line. I like a beautiful shot for me because they're right where I want them to be. Great alignment, okay? Now, a lot of people number this differently than I do. It really don't make a damn, like I said, it can be ham sandwich or turkey. It doesn't matter. I like the odd, the odd numbers or the outside shades. <coughs> the only one that's not true in that is the hardest one in football to play, and that's a damn 17. The hardest thing in football to play. But you got your ones, threes, fives, and nines, and it doesn't, it's not left and right. I just number them in a three technique, big gap player, big gap defender, and so forth and so forth, okay? So that's your outside shades. <coughs> Here's another, another shot of under. Same thing, same line. One, three, five, and nine. Here's your crash five over here. Okay, go ahead, coach. Okay, stop it right there just a minute. Stop it right here. Here's a tilted nose. Okay, here's a tilted nose playing on one technique. So this is his gap responsibility, of course. Okay? And and you're going to see something. I'd like you all to look at this, and we're going to get into it a little bit later. It's just my gumbo, <coughs> my recipe. The thing we're trying to teach them is we come out of the hips, fire the hands, and then the staggered foot comes into play. Okay, and if it's a down block, we call it in-flight adjust. If it's a reach block, we stick it in the ground and work for width and depth. Okay, but watch him strike. A little bit too high. Pretty good. Outside zone, outside gap player. Two gap players. Let me tell you guys, a lot of people look at me and they say, you know, two gap in pro ball, we play two gap, not for the run. You can do that like that, one, Coach. I just I wanted to see that. We we uh we didn't we don't play two gap for the run. We play it more for the pass. Okay. We put this guy in a in a four technique or heavy five we call it over the offensive tackle, and we relieve the linebacker of any inside gap responsibility. So now, to the single receiver side, we kick him down in the two gap, and now the wheel linebacker could get, could get underneath the end cuts. But we let him, he's basically out of the box. So we give this guy two gap responsibility. <coughs> you can do it another way, you can stun him in there. You can stun him in there and, and get the same type of thing, but you don't want to get in the pattern of doing what, What's best is to do both, have a way to do both. But there's a place for two gap, <coughs> even even though even in the, it just for the passing game, there's a place for two gap. Okay, so we number those zeros, twos, fours, and sixes. Okay, all right. Okay, here's a shot against New York. Here are both tackles in twos. They play in head up, reach block. He would have big gap responsibility. Cut off block. He'd have a gap. This is what we call a heavy nine 
but this is a heavy nine, which is a two gap defender playing with an outside slight outside shape. <coughs> but all of those guys are two gap. Okay, okay. <coughs> okay. Here's a two gap defender on a base. Coach, did we mess those lights up? Was it a little darker? This was the way you had it? That's where we okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. This is a base block on a two gap defender. Run it a couple times just where they see it. Okay. Now, this, this boy is the defensive line coach at Alabama right now. And I'm telling you, he's a hell of a run defender, but he can loosen them down. He can loosen them fillings for you when you came off on it. But he does a great job of getting his hands in. He's got both A's. Watch the Georgia center. He's going to throw him away like a damn wet sporting news and make the play. That's tough. Two gap is tough to play. Tough to play. It takes coaching to play two gap. You got to really do a good job of coaching the kid and you got to do a good job of working with him. Okay. <coughs> gap responsibility. That's what we're talking about. Here's the gap responsibility drill. Great drill, I think. I think it's so relative to the game of football. Now, there's several ways to do it. Several ways to do it. Here, we just started, we fit, it, we fit him up. We fit him up in a right three. Okay? Go back one time. We, we, we start off with his hands in place, and we, we stab the blocker. Now, here's what I'm saying. Keep those feet popping. Keep your eyes lower than the blocker's eyes. Now, one more time, please, on that one. And when the, when the drill ends, I want your feet. I always <coughs> work on a line because I always want you to look. And when the drill is over, when the play's over, I want your feet on this side of the line. So we're always, we're always on a line. Here's what happens, guys. In the running game, the gate's either going to go that way for the offense it's going to go that way for the defense. So we're always talking about press the blocker as you locate the football. Push on the damn blocker as you, as you locate the football. Now, nice nice release. Here's a spring practice shot. This is a five technique with primary gap responsibility out here, secondary gap responsibility in there. Press the blocker as you locate the ball. Okay, now, there's your five. Here's a one. Here's a one right here against Alabama, same thing. He does a nice shot. Hand placement's good, I think is another <coughs> shot. Does a hell of a job playing his gap responsibility. Nose, nose in the, it is in the gap. Eyes are lower than the blocker. Does a good job. Now that's, a, that's the one y'all do, the one hand fall off tackle, which is pretty good. Which is pretty good, I like that. I think it's good. Here's your one technique. Here's your five technique. This is the other boy. Here's the, here's the one that did it over here, and he's fixing to get it over here. <coughs> I would ask you to look at this, because I want him as, just as involved as the guy taking the damn rip. I want him I, I want him learning and looking as the other guy takes the rip. Okay. Late help in there. Late help in there. We ain't putting you outside and saying that's your primary gap. This is it. You got help in this one. In Louisiana, we would say land yap. That's your land yap, okay? <laughs> Which means some extra, okay? Something extra. That's a land yap play. You make that play over here, that's land yap. Because somebody's fitting that gap. The linebacker's fitting that gap, okay? Watch this five right here against Alabama. Hell of a play. You gotta kick his ass first. Play your gap. He uses what we call a swim release to get across it. Okay? Okay. Here's a gap response. These are drills. These, if you remember what we're talking about, is servicing those players. <coughs> Stopping the run, the drill is the gap responsibility drill. Okay, here's the here when working it with a slip.
Now, one more time on him, please, on that shot. He got his nose on the inside ear hole. He's got his nose on the inside ear hole. Watch him pop those feet and press. There's the ball carrier. Laid help outside. That's a land yap out there. That's a land yap out there. He's got the, he's got the inside yap. Okay, here he is a five technique, same guy. Now that's his primary gap right there. Okay, so you can do it. Sled, that's a beautiful way to do it. I mean, it's a great way to do it. I do it a lot that way during the season because I don't hit each other. I don't like to hit each other much. <coughs> Ain't enough of them, and they don't, if, they, if they're doing what they're supposed to do on Saturday, it's Tuesday before they over that shit. So I really, I like, I like spring ball. I like more contact than spring ball less contact than fall ball. Okay, now here's a three technique. Here's a five. Okay, this B gap is the primary gap. And you watch, and this is Jarvis Green that plays with the uh, Patriots. He's gonna, he's gonna make, get in here in the B gap late. Chad, 93, is gonna work the B gap right there. Boom, boom. One more time. Don't jump your ass in there now, Chad. I mean, uh, Jarvis, the, the end. Don't jump in there till you sure that ball's in there. We don't want two in there. We want, we want the guys responsible for it. And 93's got the big out. Okay, here's a reach block. And I put this one in here for a reason. Here's a reach block on a seven technique. Primary gap, ball crosses, he crosses. Okay? Now, here it is against the Indianapolis coach. So you, you be in charge, you show up from you. There he is. All crosses. <coughs> Can you see his nose on the inside air hole? Once the ball crosses, he crosses. Okay. And we're going to talk about steer drill later. That's what he's doing, he's steering the hell out of that paper. See that nose inside? Ball crosses, he crosses. That's hours and hours of damn work. Here's the side view of you've seen you'll like this shot. Great job of pressing that outside pad. Expanding, expanding the pad, expanding the city out, crossing and making the play. Okay, here's my seven technique work. This is, uh, hey coach, this is Victor. Work from Notre Dame. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you about this, uh, let me tell you about this drill. This guy right here, I want him peeping through this paper. This guy right here is a tight end or the key. He's the key. <coughs> Once he gives him a movement key, he now becomes a ball carrier. So he's two things. He starts off, I can't make the damn sled move. Okay? But I can shade you and make you move as if cutoff had occurred. This is going to be cut off on this guy. So so here's what's going to happen. Monte is going to move inside. He's going to play the cutoff. He's going to have his nose right here. And then Monte's going to go here and he's going to release it and come back out here. I, I don't like that hop, but you saw him there? I hear you. Monte told him cut off. Now he told him ball outside. And I used it, used him on the sled because here he is in a game against Baltimore. There he is right there. Cut off. <coughs> Defend the seat. Defend the seat. Ball outside. Defend the D. Nice shrug release too. Okay. Cut off. One arm tackle. Know y'all like that, don't you? The 
a good job. I haven't done it. Bill told me that's a great, that's hell of a drill. Okay. So now this is this is a. Hey guys, you know what, what Coach Bryant called 907 my inside drill or all that stuff? You know what Coach Bryant? You know what they call it over there? Fit drill. Fit drill. This is a front fit drill on the sled on the uh, on the bags. Everybody's fitting the gap responsibility. There's about three shots I'm just run through. Five technique on the back side. I think this one comes this way, you'll see the linebacker straight to fit. Okay, here's the off-season drill. Anybody in here from the NCAA? I cheated my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell nobody that, okay? You can't get execution like you get. You've got to do a little, you've got to do a little extra, or you got to find a way to give them a little something. In, in the off-season program, the pro ball I loved, because it wasn't cheating. It was the same thing, but it was it was in the rules. So I really I tell you one thing, pro ball got on college ball. If you like to coach, you get to do more coaching there. And in the all season program, I love all season program. Because I got forty five <coughs> minutes on the field every day. <coughs> with a ball, with sleds, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is all season drill, thank you. This is all season drill. Some of them may be in college and some of them, okay. Right, here, here's a good shot, guys. Y'all gonna see this damn shot right here, okay? Here's your boy, Victor. All right, we, 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 come back. Okay, here's this fat ass guy. Run him back in here. Gray headed fat ass guy right here. A little bit back, a little bit further. There he is. All right, look here. Here's what I'm telling that back. C gap, and I'll run it a little further. Pop it to the D. <coughs> okay? C gap, pop it to the D. Now, I'm telling Victor, go back, coach. I'm telling Victor, press the blocker off, keep your eyes rolling in the blocker's eyes, keep your feet popping, press the blocker, push on the blocker as you locate the football. Okay? Now, here he is, and the ball goes deep. Okay. Here he is in a game against the Bills. Go ahead, it's about five shots, four shots. Different views. There's his eyes. There's the separation. Great release. Stop it this big. Okay. Let me tell you. Victor is a smart guy, right, Coach? Yeah. He's a golden dollar. Yeah. All right. Here's what he told me, I think. I swear to God, that's what he told me to do. <coughs> said, we're talking about this point. He said, Coach, I was walking back to the hub, and I thought to myself, damn, that's just like that gap responsibility. <laughs> I said, but you know, I mean, that's, and really that's right on his part. I'm going to tell you guys, my guys can sit in a room like this, I ain't coach all of them, and they, they'll name the damn drill. It's like while you're trimmed against the coach, that steer drill. What do you see right here, steer drill? What do you see right there, gap responsibility drill? I think one of the reasons that I've had some success is I sold them on that shit, just like the, 
and we had some success in his life, Mr. Rooney up there selling them things like hotcakes. When you have success, they'll buy anything. You gotta have some success. Okay, this is a this is a early practice two days. Now, I'm gonna stop right here and talk about these arms just a minute because uh, a lot of people ask me. They a lot of people ask me, you know, what the hell? I've never seen that. Before. Hey, uh, young Bill. Kyle. Kyle. Yes. Come on, Chris. Because I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to show you this because uh, it's going to be prevalent in all the films. You see all of it in the film. There was a time at LSU that I was talking to the uh, maintenance guy who I had befriended. Loved wild turkey. Should have never let me know it. Because <laughs> I made an mm -hmm. alcoholic out of his ass. <laughs> but you want to be friends with those guys. <clears throat> So I was telling him one day, I said, you know, I'd like to have me a pole, a pipe, and I can't build nothing. We, we got a uh, uh, two kid at home that has a mom on his pink. And if I want to borrow a hammer, I got to get permission for it. And she'll say, what, what do you want with it? What are you going to do with it? And be damn sure you put it back. I mean, that's how handy I am, okay? So by telling him, I said, I got this pipe, like this. And then, like, I, I would have a, another pipe that kind of stuck up from it like that and like that. And they would be attached at the bottom on the pipe. And I said, I can use this during the off season. I'd like to put some kind of rubber coating uh, or sleeve or something on there where I could do this, work on supernation. I said, hmm. No, I think... I, I'll talk to you about something else later. I'm on, I ain't using that thing because I done found me something I can use. Okay, so the off season, we use them damn arms. Now, when I wanna, when I wanna release him, ain't hurt him a bit. You can do a lot like that. Now, I go, when I go one gap, it's like this. Because I'm going sternum and bicep, okay? So you'll see them using their arms like that. And when we ain't got pads on, we can practice hard against each other, doing a lot of things because of those arms. Okay? I just thank you. I just wanted you to realize what that does. This is a pretty good release off of 54. Now here's my manager. Run that back one time. Here's my manager. He's running right at the crack of his ass. And when he makes that cut, if it's your primary gap, boom, you're going to react to it right now. If he's secondary gap, you make sure that he's in that thing. Okay? Press the blocker. Release. Now, hold it. <coughs> Byron Dawson. He's the defense coordinator at uh, a high school in Shreveport. Won state championship this year. Coach Saban did not like his ass for a long time. Boy, you talking about, you know, some guys got to prove they can. Some guys got to prove they can't. <coughs> This old boy here, and I knew he could. I felt I had a lot of confidence in him. He was short. He, he was out of shape in the first offseason. Broke my head last year. He quit three or four times, and it was hard to get Coach Shaver back on his side. Okay. But a good football player, and he's turned into a damn good football coach. He's playing the left three. Hold it this way. He's playing the left three. Okay, here's this gap, here's this primary gap, there's secondary over there, okay. Okay, the ball went A-gap, ball went A-gap. See him release that blocker? Okay, gotcha. That's him right there playing that three pick. This is a boy named Metcalf right here, still in the lead. Got an ass two X L wide right here, see? <laughs> here, here's Byron, you'll see him come into the picture. There, see the arrow? All right. Stop this. Y'all you get it? Did you see good? Same guy. Same guy. Same drill. Same guy. Same guy. 
I left his junior year, after his junior year, he didn't play much as a senior. And, and he called me one day and I said, by room, I don't see you in the game much. He said, Coach, I don't know, I ain't good as he used to be. I said, why? He said, I don't know, I can't get off blocks. He's one of the best that I ever coached getting off blocks. 